How do you do? <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you? I'm fine. I'm so glad we planned this. It's very exciting. So what would you like to do? Um, I prepared some questions all related to the Miss Miller mysteries. Uh, all right, <laughs> let's see what you start with. I noticed that you have many mystery stories, not yes. only the Miss Miller series, but also Detective Mole. Well, mysteries are so important for children because they want to know why they're here and what's going on between mommy and daddy and how come I'm not included and all these things. They are the first detectives. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm able to write the stories for them. I've even uh, written mystery stories for very small children, a Sherlock Chick series. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. And they're very popular, big picture books, but very simple dialogue about a little chick trying to solve mysteries on the farm. I also, I write about other people and their experiences and mm -hmm. the mysteries they're trying to solve. That just helps me make up characters and help them solve their own puzzles. Yeah, because I feel like these stories are not just for kids. Even for adults, they're the most fun. The story just makes sense. All the clues, they're really intriguing, and I really want to know who did it. <laughs> I usually write them so that people can solve the mysteries along with Miss Mallard. For instance, the story is called Gondola to Danger. Yeah. Most of the stories, I've been to the places, and that's what has inspired me to write stories about them. And I have Miss Mallard going to solve a mystery at the Doge's Palace mm -hmm. in the center of Venice. A guard opens the door of the museum with his left, with the left. hand. That's the major clue. So the clues are laid out, and you finally have to realize at the end, of course, he was the crook. Because Miss Mallard's great love of her life is El Ducco, and he keeps leaving little messages for her but they are written in the left hand. Yes. And she knows he did not write them. They were done by someone who is left-handed and who did it, the fellow on the first page. Yes. I write myself clues like that and build a whole story around that. As you mentioned, books happen in different places. Yes. And also all the names of the stories are some transportation mode to something unfortunate like escalator to agony, snowmobile to panic, a ferris yes. wheel to dizzy. That's impressive. I noticed that Miss Mallard is always dressed very elegantly with a hat and a coat. Oh, I usually try to relate what she's wearing to where the country is. Mm. So I will research clothing from everywhere and usually try to give her clothes that would be typical to be worn there. I noticed that in all the stories, there is never a murder. Is it by design because it is a children's book? That's correct. It's all robberies or finding treasure, lies and deceit and things like that, but no murder, no killing. Mm -hmm. I've got something here for you, too. I was out in schools in Alaska, and I got marvelous ideas from the children there. And what I do is I, I wrote a story from an actual experience that happened where the principal of the school and her husband took me on a tour around Anchorage. And I thought when I got back home, oh boy, I should write a story to show all those wonderful places they took. And I wrote about Miss Mallard going on a speaking tour in Alaska. So that's the dog sled to dread, right? Yes, his dog sled to dread. Did you read that one too? I read all of them. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> I have a true fan here. <laughs> yeah. And of course, Alaska is known for dog sled races mm -hmm. and things like that. So I put all of that in the book. This is called a book dummy. Mm -hmm. I type out the manuscript and then I paste the text into the pages Ooh. and draw a sketch with it of what mm. the action is all about. And this I present to the publisher. They know exactly, oop, see, it's falling apart now. Mm -hmm. They know exactly what the book is going to look mm. like. And then I go into finishes. The result was this book. Mm. See, it's almost exactly like my sketch. Yeah. 
the new version, 30 years later, got a new cover, black and white reproductions of the color illustration. And they made the text bigger, highlighted certain words, and it put their meanings in the back. It's a, another wonderful guide for children to help them to read. So here we are from the book dummy to the finished work. Mm. Where it is today. Mm. In addition, they made an animated film. This is the kind of thing I do when I was doing the films. This one is for the first book that in the series that I did. They're inspired by that one. Murder on the Orient Express. Right. I changed it to an express train on the Nile River in Egypt mm -hmm. because then I knew I would have a lot more colorful things to write about. Pyramids and camels and things mm -hmm. like that. So that's why I chose to tell my version of uh, Miss Mallard on this train trip and a mysterious behavior of a character named Ruddy Duck who is a comedian. He just, he's just slapping people on the back and laughing loud and quack, 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 quack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in the end, when he was locked in the, like, the mummy it. case, I'm a little bit happy about that. He totally deserved it. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I did want to tell you one thing, though, before I go on to this. This story, Dog Said to Dread. Mm -hmm. So I told you that I wrote it about the experiences that I had with this lovely couple took me a wonderful trip. Here they turn out to be the villains at the end. Yeah. Uh, so I sent the book to them once published and thanked them for a wonderful time. Never heard back from them. <laughs> yeah. I learned from that. You don't really let people know that they're the villain. In the <laughs> back to Express Train and mm -hmm. the making of the film. It always starts out with a script, and then I write comments on where I think changes should be made in the script. There's my notes. Mm -hmm. And then it goes into a storyboard, which they take the script, and drawings are made from my drawings. It is done in China at Shanghai Animated Film Studios. Mm -hmm. And they'll take my drawings and they'll, with a computer, move them and make the arms move. So it's terribly exciting. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I write comments on the storyboards that they present to me. Yeah, I want to make sure I'm getting everything in here. And then they turn the storyboards over to animators who then draw them up and follow the text of the manuscript. Oh, got it, got it. So that's how the films were made from the Miss Meller books. All of them have been made into films that are showing in 70 countries around the world. Oh, that's impressive. Have you seen the films? It was aired, I think, early 2000s in the largest kids. We, yes. we just watched them over and over again. It's still the like running jokes, like every time we see a duck, okay, there goes the buffalo head. <laughs> It's like part of our family now. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> and yeah. also because you wrote every story in different locations. When I traveled to Venice and I went to college in Hong Kong, I would say, oh, that's the place where that scene is in. I hadn't been to Hong Kong when I did that. It's called Rickshaw to Horror. And because I read that some places in China, they no longer have rickshaws. Mm -hmm. They still had them in Hong Kong. So I placed everything there. I learned all about Hong Kong through books. Mm -hmm. I even learned their ferry boat schedule. I learned about floating restaurants. Mm -hmm. Everything in there is as though I had been there it, because I always wanted to go to Hong Kong. Oh, somebody told me one time, two million children in China refuse to eat Peking duck because of their beloved Miss Mallard. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was so wonderful. Even to this day, uh, there is a Chinese website where we can still watch the cartoons. Millions of views and counting every day. Is your website over there? That, uh, it's called Bili Bili. I will send you the link. It also has something like a discussion board. People can type in what they're thinking. It's wonderful. What kind of things do they talk about? 
Some people say it really gave them nightmares when they're young. The stories can go into some dark side, like the headless ghost. Also, the kiss killer can be a little bit scary. <laughs> oh. And another trending topic is people really ship Miss Mallard and Elle Daco. They feel like, oh, such a great chemistry they have. Sometimes people just solve the case. <laughs> yeah, and also in the animation field, because we have this good cop, bad cop chemistry, people are always like, oh, yeah, here he comes again. Also, he is the only one that does not know Miss Mallard is Miss Mallard. Willard tries to introduce her to him, but he's, oh, you're with your auntie. Yeah. <laughs> And he never waits to listen. This is Miss Mount. If he heard the name, he would collapse. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Inspector Bucklehead is just mentioned in the stories as Willard's boss who gives him problems. But the film company loved the character and they put him in every story. People the talk about how Miss Mallard always jinxed herself. He, she's always like, oh, we will never run into a case. And then like five seconds later, there is a case. <laughs> oh, I know it, right. Or like, some duck will say, oh, we almost got drunk. And Miss Mallard will say, oh, nonsense, we're ducks. We can swim. <laughs> <laughs> Their language is, isn't that just ducky and things like yeah. that. <laughs> you, you, you got hunched ducks duck napping and then sometimes Miss Miller would just yell to Wheeler duck and then uh, Wheeler would just duck. Yeah. I like all the puns because sometimes it loses a little bit during the translation. In the Chinese version we, we cannot really get those things. It's oh. only when I started reading English version I feel like, oh that's why that this is funny especially for the word duck detective is translated as a duck detective in China. Oh. And also all the names, again, you're always trying to task yourself, I feel like, because most of the character names are types of ducks. That happened by accident. Uh, my studio is on the street here in New York City, and sometimes the window is open to get fresh air in and stuff. And I was working away on a series of my first duck books called Henry the Duck. Mm -hmm. He's a white duck. A man walked by and he says, you know what? Everybody thinks these are just white ducks. There are all kinds of breeds of ducks. You should be putting those in your books. So that really stuck with me. And I looked up a bird book and saw there was this big range of ducks, yeah. different markings on them and different names. So that's what I put in the Miss Mallard Mysteries, all the different breeds of ducks, which is another learning experience for children. They're learning in the way I did from this man who walked by my studio. And the next book that came after the express train to trouble, A Cable Car to Catastrophe, mm -hmm. in which Miss Mallard is riding a cable car in Switzerland and out the window sees a robbery being committed in one of the chateaus. And she's on her way to see Willard and together they race down to that chateau and a case unfolds about who was trying to rob the opera singer. Mm -hmm. her, her voice actually brings an end to the <laughs> <laughs> When the crook is trying to escape and she lets out a huge mm -hmm. and it snowballs down and locks him in place. Where else did I go? Oh, Taxi to Intrigue, when we went yeah. to London for vacation, me and my family, I have a young son who is now a father himself and, and provide us with two wonderful grandchildren who inspire me now with new stories. Mm -hmm. This is the original version, and this is the new one. And Miss Meller travels all over London and ends up at the top of Big Ben, the crook tries to toss her out the window and she hangs by the hands of the clock and is rescued just in time and the crook is caught. She's in danger a lot, but there's no harm done to her. Nothing could happen to her. I have to ask one question. You have a lot of books about ducks. Is that because your last name is Quackenbush? Ah, uh, you absolutely hit the target. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of fun that's been made about the name, especially when I was in the army. They mm -hmm. called me Quack. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, when my son was born, I thought, I don't want him to go through what I've been through with the Quackenbush name. And I invented a duck character called Henry the Duck. 
and dedicated the book to him, mm -hmm. which is a big success called Too Many Lollipops. Mm -hmm. uh, a duck who goes to the doctor with all kinds of ailments, and every time he leaves, the doctor gives him a lollipop. Well, he ends up with too many lollipops and getting sick from all those lollipops. <laughs> uh, he goes to see the doctor one more time, and the doctor says, well, this time, stay away from lollipops. <laughs> So every book that I did was dedicated to my son. After that, nobody made fun of him and his last name. Your dad writes Miss Mallard mysteries and Henry the Duck mysteries. That's so nice. And also I learned that your wife's name is also Marjorie, just as Miss Mallard. Uh, the publisher asked me to do that. You've got to give her a first name. Name her after your wife, Marjorie. That's what I did. <laughs> and I noticed that you have a really impressive resume. You got your bachelor in art design and then master in social studies and then PhD in childhood education at the age of 70. So that's super impressive. Where did it's you find all that out? <laughs> I told you I'm a big fan. Oh. All these three degrees. They seem different, but they also cooperate nicely in the artwork. It's just very impressive to see you are continuously learning new things. Oh, you know, that's nice of you to say, yes. The other thing you must realize, James Joyce, who wrote Ulysses, says the making of an artist is exile, solitude, and cunning. <laughs> Well, cunning, of course, is coming up with new ideas and uh, selling your work. And the uh, solitude and exile is part of the profession. Very often, I will take courses and go on with further education merely as a way of being in touch with people and new ideas. Uh, we have to keep growing and progressing or we get alienated from the rest of the world. I'm glad you noticed that the <laughs> reason I did it is really to keep out of the isolation mode. I belong to Mystery Writers of America and I go to their functions because they're wonderful lectures given by other writers and it's very inspiring and very enjoyable. I feel like this book is not like you have to learn something. It asks the kids to be more curious and then nice to people, I think this affect them in a subtle but a really steady way. It makes it fun for them. For instance, I've written a lot of history books, too, for children. And it's because when I was growing up, I thought there was nothing more boring than reading about somebody walking five miles to school or reading their books by fireside. And I said, where's the fun in this? <laughs> That's what my history books are just like the Miss Mallard Mysteries. They make fun with the history. That's what I think helps encourage children to enjoy reading, is to make it as much fun for them as possible. For, for me personally, it also gave me interest in geology. Every time I read a book, if it's in a country that I don't know or never visited, it really gave me the interest to search more to see whether there really is a palace like that. Yes. Right. I noticed that there are only 10 in here. Will all of them come out? You have the box set. Oh, my goodness. That's wonderful. I would definitely recommend everyone buy it. I have a feeling that the next five books, they're going to be put in their own little box. Mm. That's what my impression is. The publisher of the new editions is Aladdin Books, and they are an imprint of Simon & Schuster Children's Books. You can go online and look it up and the, you'll see the whole list and you'll see the new ones that are coming out. Also check my website. Mm -hmm. It'll have a whole list of things about my classes, about my films, but just click on books and that'll tell the whole story of what's happening with the Miss Mellon Mysteries and my other books. <laughs> Great. I found that website. That's how I found you. And I really like that website because the quack sound. Every time I visit that, <laughs> I would go quack. quack. Yeah. After that, there is one of my favorites, Flamingo to Mischief. <laughs> that's where she's with the love of her life, El Ducco. Oh. I like that name in the Chinese version. I didn't realize what it means. And then when I realized it, I feel like, oh, you are so smart in naming the characters. I get a lot of nice and wonderful letters like yours. 
And I had one recently from a young man in Rome that loved that story and asked for his fiance if I have an original available or to make a drawing of Miss Mallard and El Ducco. And what I did was I took what's in the back of the book where they're dancing the tango together. Mm -hmm. I sent that to them and they appreciate it. I said, well, I'm giving this as a gift because of what you've all gone through in Italy is so awful. It's the least I could do. (laughs) Oh, you are so nice. So glad to be part of your lives. And I get all kinds of letters about Miss Mallard. Yours is the biggest and the most enthusiastic. And I thank you. (laughs) Inviting me to do this video with you. I hope people you'll be sharing it with will enjoy it as much as I have talking with you and meeting you. You're a lovely person. I, I want to wish you the best. <laughs> Thank you so much. This moment will always be treasured. How oh, lovely to hear this. <laughs> After I post the video, I will share you the link. And if there are any comments in Chinese, I will translate for you. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, nice talking to you. Good luck to you and your husband. And see you again. Keep in touch. Keep in yeah, touch. keep in touch. See you. Yeah. Bye. Bye now. <laughs>